you have launched a book and you're scratching your head about the conversation of marketing. Um, I was just telling the guests before I bring her on that I got in contact with an author recently who is getting ready to release a book. And I asked her, so how's the launch coming along? How's, how's everything coming together? She's like, I have no idea what to do next. So if, if you've ever been in that situation or you're finding yourself in that situation, you're definitely going to want to pay attention to this conversation because this is a really big pain point for a number of authors. Um, I'm excited to be talking to Yvonne DeVita today. Um, and let's dive in to this conversation. You're listening to The Author's Leverage. You've written a book, you got it published, and you know you can make a much bigger impact with it than you already have. Maybe you're in the process of writing and publishing and want to be smart about how you help others and make more money while doing it. Welcome to The Author's Leverage Podcast, your guide to building a profitable business and changing more lives with your published work. This is the number one show that brings you tips on making you a more successful author from the very best experts around every week. Our mission is to help you blast through the noise and get you clear on your path to success as an author. You'll be equipped with practical tips and insights from host Parshel Tashi and her featured guests. And you'll leave each episode more excited, more confident to get that dream authorship life that you deserve. So sit back, relax, and get ready we're about to get real. We're about to clear. And from here, the sky's the limit. Here's your host, a former school teacher turned creative media entrepreneur and now founder of The Author's Leverage, Parshel Tashi. All right, joining me today is Yvonne DeVita. She is a writing machine. When she's not writing, she's reading. And when she's not reading, she's working with smart, talented women and men to coach them and advise them on their next powerful book. On a business level, she brings 20 years of training, experience, and continued study in the field of communication, business development, offline and online, and marketing for authors, would-be authors, and new business professionals. So welcome to the Authors Leverage again, <laughs> Yvonne. Thanks for being here. <laughs> Yeah, yes, um, we've got to stop meeting this way, Parshel. <laughs> However, at least we can see each other. Yes. <laughs> That's an inside joke, folks. I know. We So this is a number two run of this conversation because, you know, technology and its hiccups, it happens. And so, uh, Yvonne, I'm just so appreciative that you came back and we're able to talk again. And uh, I think even with a more poignant conversation, don't you think? I do. And I, I'm really so happy to be here because you're one of my favorite people. And what you do is something that within the realm of marketing a book, business professionals especially should be considering. They should be looking and talking to you even before their book is launched, because in the end, a book is a tool in your business. And um, we can talk about how it's a tool for fiction writers also, but mostly we, you and I work with business professionals. And this book is designed, written, um, communicated to help not just build the business, but build the community. And how better to do that than to develop courses? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, just in general, uh, when it came to launching a book, and I know that you've been in this industry for a long time, um, it's, it's definitely evolved. It's changed to something very different. However, even with all of the digital options that are available to us now, many authors still struggle with that question of how am I supposed to market my book? How do I sell more of my books? Um, and you just mentioned before, it's something you have to think about really earlier on in the case, mm -hmm. but um, what do you usually advise uh, that they do or what you know, be thinking about when approaching the book marketing process? Well, I, as you know, I talk to a lot of authors and would be authors. And one of the first things that I try to impress upon um, people who are even thinking of writing a book is to begin talking about the book and sharing some of the book's content well before the book launch. Authors get a little bit skittish and a little bit scared about that. They're afraid that they're going to share something from chapter two that when the book comes out won't be there because they're 
developmental editor or publisher or whomever they're working with decided to take it out and they're like but what will people think and i'm here to say they won't think anything because in the end they'll be so grateful you shared something ahead of time and were willing to put yourself out there and let them know that this book was going to be coming in six months or or a year or however it is that when the book comes out they may write you an email and say, I missed this particular part. And you can write back to them. And now what? What, Parshall? They've started a relationship. That's the key. That is really key. I think the question really is about leading on that, mm -hmm. getting, in, getting in touch with people, right? When I think about marketing, it's knowing who your market is and how you're just building that relationship. It's a community. So you're building your community. <clears throat> Some people like to call it a fan club. It doesn't matter what you call it. So um, I, I do I do get a, a laugh sometimes out of um, <clears throat> people, excuse me, people who who I meet. <clears throat> Let me take a little sip of water. Sure, take your time. <clears throat> people that um, I'm connected with or that I talk to or people who are referred to me and, and I will say to them, so I hear you have a book or your book is coming out soon. And um, um, they'll say, yeah, it launched, it's out. And I'm like, okay, how's it going? Well, they'll say it's on Amazon. <laughs> it's like the old age old build it and they will come. No, they won't come. They don't care. They don't know who you are. And just because you put it on Amazon, which by the way, sidebar, it does need to be on Amazon now. A lot of people partial are, are kind of down on Amazon and they say to me, I don't want it on Amazon, but Amazon is the biggest book retailer on the planet. So you have to have your book there. However, having it there doesn't guarantee people will find it. So leading up to the launch of the book, again, you need to talk about the book and you need to develop a plan. And the marketing plan needs to engage with people on your social media platforms. So how do you do this? Again, you share content from the book, but you also share personal stories. Once in a while, you might want to invite people to a Zoom for a Q&A. Do you want to come and ask me questions about writing my book or about something in the book that, that I've mentioned that you want to talk about? And everything that you do to reach out and discuss the content and the purpose and the message of the book gives people the sense that you care about them. And I'm assuming that you do care about them because no one writes a book for it to just sit on a shelf in their office. They write it because they want other people to read it. And generally they want other people to gain something from it, to, to gain education, insight. I want them to also be entertained a little, even in a nonfiction book. We want those stories in there. We want that real true to life. Did you fall down? I tell people you have to bleed on the page because the reader is bleeding in their real life. They wanna know that you're doing the same thing. And so if you can do this, if you can make a plan, gosh, Parcel, a plan, a plan that says from six months ahead, this is what I'm going to do. Three months ahead, this is what I'm going to do. And then from three months forward, you have to start doing weekly, weekly things. Um, you're going to be way ahead of a lot of other people. That's so true. And the key is having a plan, <laughs> knowing ahead of time what you're going to do even before the book releases. Um, now, you mentioned before, too, that there are, of course, a number of publishers that are you know, available now to support authors in a number of ways. Um, and you shared something about, I think, but right before we got on that, you know, some folks get with the publisher and the publisher does not provide that. What's your opinion on that? Should, should Is that something that publishers... Um, need to also uh, encompass in there, or, or I should say, include in their services, or yes. is it, yes. um, yeah. Absolutely. If you're a hybrid publisher, you need to include, if not marketing, you need to include some training. You need to let the author know that they have to do something that the launch of the book is not going to sell the book. I, I have met with um, several, several authors who worked with hybrid publishers. And mm -hmm. I say to them, 
well, what did they do? Well, mm -hmm. they did my cover and they did my interior page design and I got a book. And I said, and, and did they help you with marketing? No, I thought they were going to, but they didn't. Now, I want to put a caveat in here. Sometimes the publishers specifically leave that out. They don't say they're going to do that, which means the author didn't read the contract. Mm. Because when you're working with a hybrid publisher, there's a contract involved. I want authors to read the contract carefully. I want them to understand exactly what the publisher expects from them and what they expect from the publisher. And then if it doesn't happen, they can go back to the publisher and try to negotiate something. Because some of the publishers said, oh, sure, we'll put out a press release. And hmm. I'm not a fan of press releases anymore. <laughs> I just think they're going out into the great big wide internet World Wide web and who sees them? Nobody. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. very difficult as an indie author or a new author to get a press release noticed unless you're working with a professional who has contacts. And that's some that's a way that you can get in your marketing plan something concrete that could happen. So I'm not fond of publishers who say, okay, here on, on um, line line B, one A, we're going to send out a press release because the two authors I'm working with currently, that's what happened. They got press releases. In fact, sadly, Parcel, I read the press releases and clearly um, they need to hire better people to write their press releases because they really weren't you 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 understand because this yeah. probably is something relevant to what you do if you're sending out a press release i recommend that my authors first start locally and get in front of their local news and that mm. they have a hook so if you just wrote a business book and the content in that business book is going to help people understand quiet quitting that is your lead into, mm -hmm. I would love, I'm available for interview and here's what my book is about because quiet quitting, that's your hook. Mm -hmm. That's so true. Like digging into your local resources and media and news can be, I think much more substantial uh, releases of information about your book and, and its credibility versus a press release. Yeah, and, and not only that, but you often then may be noticed by other places, other podcasts or other news stations or even radio. And in the end, you have to continue then marketing. You can't then just sit back and I, I put out this press release and I got on this news station and I'm going to go to Amazon and see how many books I sold now. No, it doesn't work that way. In, in the end, if you're a business professional, the goal isn't to sell thousands of books. You can sell thousands of books, but the goal really is to build the community we talked about. It's to serve the clientele that you want to serve and, and have built your business to serve and which your book supports. So you can create then to your point and what I tell people, you can now create webinars and workshops and courses and you can give your book away for free quote unquote, because you're going to include it in the price of the webinar or workshop, obviously. Mm -hmm. But in the end, the book is your tool. It's your tool. And you have to then do the same thing with your book that you did when you started your business. You went out and met people and talked about what you do and you listened to their problems. And if you had a solution, you said, wow, I'd love to talk to you about that. Right. Um, mm. You didn't you didn't go out into networking. I, I just talked to someone about this recently. You don't go to a networking event and start handing business cards out all over the place without talking right. to people. Right. <laughs> so right. you cannot now throw your book at everyone. <laughs> you have to tell them why they might want to read it. You have to engage them in the conversation, build the relationship, find out how much of a solution you have for them and their problems. Mm, mm. I love that. Building a community, serving the client, which your book actually supports, right? Like, I love that bridge you just made there. It's like, it's a no-brainer, but it's also just so obvious, right? It <laughs> and seems then, obvious, uh, but 
<laughs> but, but authors don't know, right? They they mm -hmm. write the book and they've, so we've all been lulled. We've been lulled into the small sense of, well, gee, um, gee, Stephen King and Tony um, Robbins and all these people, look at how many books they sell. Look at what the publishers do for them. And partial, one-tenth of one percent. That's where these these authors fit. Guess what? You are not up there in that one tenth of one percent yet. Maybe someday right, you will right, be, right. but you aren't there yet. And um, you have to understand that when you sign with a traditional publisher, if you sign with one, they will also expect you to do a lot of your own marketing. That's true. That's true. That's a big difference. I mean, in the traditional sense, they usually take on more of that, more of those, uh, more of the responsibility, I should say, of promoting it, getting out there um, in a traditional sense. Or is that not the case? Somewhat. No, no, no. Oh, That's oh, okay. only, again, for the one-tenth of one percent. For the uh, average yes. person, the average person, they might do a little bit more than one of these hybrid publishers we talked about mm. or someone else. But before you sign with a traditional publisher, they're going to see and want to know how big your platform is. Because yep. if you don't have a big enough platform to sell the books they're going to print, then they're not going to sign you to begin with. And yeah. then after they publish, um, I have several friends who publish with traditional publishers, and they tell me all the time that the publisher expected them to get out there and sell the book. Again, because they're not the the kingpin here. They're in in the back of the bowling mm -hmm. alley, so mm -hmm. to speak. And and it, and it's okay. I want, I don't want to scare people. I don't want to make people feel like oh, this is such a losing proposition. No, absolutely not. It's a winning proposition, no matter which way you you go. Because when you are in charge of your own book then you determine where to take it and who to talk to. You don't have a publisher telling you, you have to be here at this time, at this date, and this is what you talk about. Not to mention that they've already decided what the, the title of your book is, what the cover is going to look like, and what testimonials go on. And if you do your own book, you get to choose all of those things and you get to manage that on your own. And then you get to decide how to use that book in your business. Exactly. It's, it's very, very different. Very different. And Yvonne, can you talk to a little bit more about some of the ways that you specifically work and help with authors? I mean, at what stage uh, do you typically work with them and how do you get them to a more successful place? Well, what I do is I generally work with my authors um, from the first word to the last word. And what I do is I help them using developmental editing. I help them actually write the book. And this means that I keep them focused on the message. We call it the through line. The through line is that message that you're bringing from um, beginning to end. You can't drop it off in the middle and start a new message uh, uh, in the book. So we, we um, work on that very closely. I want to make sure they tell stories. I want to make sure they're engaging the reader. I want them to understand that any corrections or changes to words or paragraphs or even chapters are relevant to how is the reader going to understand this when they read it? How do, I mean, one of the things we talk about is how do the readers you want to reach consume this material? So generally, um, by the way, print books are still very popular. A lot of people like eBooks. In eBooks, you can have links. So that is a really powerful tool today, which wasn't available years ago. Um, a lot of people like audiobooks now. So we have to talk about, okay, how is this going to sound when someone reads it? Mm -hmm. So I work with them on that process. And then my husband does the interior page design and the cover design. And we work with them then throughout the project to find beta readers. And the beta readers are the 20 to 30 people that you find who will read the unfinished galley proof. So, so the book is done, but it hasn't been, we haven't gone through it for, to correct all the mistakes and, and all of that. It's uncorrected, rather, galley proof. And we ask the readers to read it, 
send us their comments. These are the testimonials that will go inside the book, that will go on the back cover, that will go on the website. Um, so we do that. We make sure they have a website. We make sure they have social media channels. We make sure they know what they're supposed to do with those. We provide some of the content for it and we guide them. That's exactly what nurturing big ideas is about. We guide them to being taking charge of the book and the project and the tool that they're creating. That's powerful. Like you said, from the first word to the <laughs> to the last, like everything. Wow, that's 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 amazing. Um, as we're starting to wrap up the conversation, I would love for you to share any other parting words of advice that come to mind when you think about you know authors who want to market their book better, um, be thinking more smart about that. Um, anything that you would like to share there? Absolutely. I've always got extra little things to share. So. <laughs> okay. um, Here's, here's a, a, a little tidbit. If you have a book that's been out for six months, a year, two years, it really doesn't matter. And it wasn't doing well or isn't selling and you're worried about what to do with it. It's just kind of sitting there. You can do what's called a re-release. And a re-release involves perhaps creating a new cover, perhaps getting new testimonials to put on the inside. And then you put it back up on Amazon and you do a launch. And a lot of people, um, Parshall, didn't even do a launch. They put the book up, someone got it up on Amazon for them, or they put it up there and it was there. And as I say, they said, well, my book's on Amazon now. Now, what we do is we do a launch. And the launch involves um, weeks of preparation and telling the whole world that the book is coming, the book is coming, the book is coming, and then the book is launched and everybody wants to buy it. So you can do a re-release and do a new launch and um, build some new life into that book. And I think a lot of um, authors should be thinking about that today. Absolutely. And to think beyond the book too, not mm -hmm. just the fact that it's up, but there's a whole other journey that you can carve out for your readers. Exactly, exactly, yep. So what, what would be, last question, <laughs> what would be your, your one word? I think I asked you this uh, on our first yes. recording, but what is your one word that um, that you want the world to know is from you. Yeah, I, it's still the same. And the word is journey because um, I'm on this really fantastic journey with so many authors who have really put their heart and soul into something that um, isn't meant to make them better. It's, it's meant to better the world, <clears throat> to better the community that they're building. And the journey that we're on is really bringing people together. And so I, I have a real strong um, affinity lately for bringing people together and, and it's a journey. Absolutely. I love that. Yvonne, I think we did it. We, got we did it. We did it. <laughs> the second run, uh, I would say that this is the better of the two, I feel Excellent. like. Yes. And I'm just so excited that we were able to talk more specifically to this for the listeners and the viewers today. So um, thanks again for, for being here and um, for, for sharing your wisdom with us. Um, Parshal, I thank you. And by the way, I have a number of eBooks on my site for people, Nurturing Big Ideas and the programs, books and programs page. And um, I'm updating my marketing book because I'm going to include some of the content oh, yes. we talked about here that wasn't there, but it does have a timeline. Um, the marketing okay. book is a timeline for people to see what needs to happen six months before and all leading up to the launch. I think that is so, so needed. So, so needed. So we'll be sure to link to your site and your profiles on this episode. And I encourage everyone tuning in to connect with Yvonne and uh, follow her and see what she's up to and connect with her. If you need support with your book, she's the go-to. She's got your back. She's laid out everything that needs to happen and she will ensure that it gets done. So uh, thanks again, Yvonne, for being here. Thanks. I was so happy to be here. You've been tuning into the Author's Leverage Podcast. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe so you can stay up to date with all of our latest guest appearances and receive the best of the best strategies on successful authorship today. And be sure to connect with us and with today's guests using the links below this episode. If you're interested in turning your bestseller into a premium and profitable online course, head on over to our website and schedule a call with us today. Until next time, remember, publishing creates credibility, but products 
create cash, you can repurpose your book as a learning experience to make the impact and the income you want as an author. We'll see you on the next episode of The Author's Leverage.